In this video, I'm going to be giving you an example of things to think about if you want to get, to get into sound design, whether it's for film, whether it's for you know commercial work, whether it's for music production. It's just things to kind of, kind of consider if you're trying to get into mixing as a uh, audio engineer or post-production editor. Uh, these are just things I picked up and started implementing more in my own workflow over the years. Um, you don't necessarily need to use expensive plugins. You can use the stock ones and create some really cool, fun stuff. I want us to take this little quick journey and we're going to picture a person outside of a nightclub. So you as the engineer, the mixer, we want to think about things that we hear in the environment. We would hear the music, right? Now how sound works, your frequencies you have this whole spectrum. So we have a spectral view in this particular app. It doesn't matter if you're using Audacity, uh, Reaper, FL Studio, um, Cubase, Pro Tools, whatever DAW you're using. This doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's gonna carry across all these different things. The only thing we're gonna really need is an EQ and some kind of reverb. So just a quick breakdown, like when it comes to audio, your low end frequencies, are what's going to travel the furthest. High-end frequencies don't travel that far. Like That's why from a distance you'll hear like the car with like a big bass before you can hear the, the high-end because the bass can travel a lot further. It's carrying more energy. So when you're outside of like a, a nightclub or something, you'd hear the bass. You wouldn't hear all like the little tiny hi-hats and whatever's in there, right? You'd hear the booming bass and the drums. So that's what we're going to kind of think about when we're working on the sound design. So we have our music, and one of the EQs I've picked up, actually, I'd call it more of a weird hybrid of like an EQ and a filter. It's called Peel. I'm not sponsored by any of these plugins, by the way. This is just tools I have in my little workflow, and you can add this to your arsenal, too, if you want to. This won't break your bank. Basically, it's a filter slash EQ kind of thing all in one. So you only have two, two buttons, on and off. It's, think of it like flipping a phase. <laughs> um, if you're like a visual person, you're like in Photoshop or something, you know how you'd have your uh, uh, mask on, right? You can invert the mask. That's essentially what this is doing. So with it enabled like this, it's only going to play whatever's inside of this little bounding box. You know, with that, you can kind of create some nice, fun little sound builds and uh, effects with that. I'm not covering this app specifically. I just want to show you what we're essentially doing. And then you have the other button that can invert that. So anything inside this box, it's going to eliminate. And that's basically what I'm trying to do here. To my ear, that's a good starting point. So you're outside this club. We hear some of the bass. That's cool. But we can play around with the size of the environment. We're also going to think about like the size of this building. Is it a giant coliseum? Is it a nightclub? Is it a bar? You know, what kind of interior does it have? Is it a lot of metal reflective surfaces like that? Is it uh, carpeted? Is it you know, these all, all things you think about and you discuss as a audio engineer and like sound designer? If you're working on a film, a commercial, even music, you know, if you're trying to make like a funny skit or whatever it may be, uh, I guarantee you have heard these different things used. Um, I can think of different examples off the top of my head. Let's say like, uh, I don't know, the show Euphoria. Like a character is becoming inebriated or whatever substance they're using is taking effect. The music doesn't start sounding as clear anymore. As they start like blacking out or whatever it may be, before you know it, they're like completely gone. You'd hear that used in films like that. Uh, I can think of like our shows like that. Let's say like a film like Kill Bill or something, right? Where she's ready to fight all these people in this room. You want to build tension. Same thing. Characters kind of like eyeing everyone, they're staring them down, they're looking intense, they're getting ready to, to scrap, you know. 
So this is something you can use for like sound design for that. I'm just giving you quick examples off the top of my head here, but um, fun ways you can use it. So we have our EQ, characters outside. So things you want to also consider is what are you hearing outside? You're probably hearing cars pass. You're hearing people talk as they're like waiting in line. So you, these are different like things you'd start layering into your mix to make it sound like an actual environment. So we want to make this sound a little bigger. So for this example, I'm using uh, Reverb by Waves, but again, there's a ton of free VSTs and plugins out there. You don't need to spend money to do these that you hear all the time. You just don't notice them. And honestly, that's kind of the goal. It's a weird job. When you do your job correctly, people shouldn't notice. <laughs> so it's like a, it's an odd job to be an audio guy. <laughs> like a, most people don't know what our job is and what we all do. Kind of comes with the territory, unfortunately. Um, but we have our EQ. We have our reverb. I'm just using a preset. I kind of played around with some of the mix. We have a dry, wet mix. Essentially, that just means... Um, either applying the effect all the way or just some of it. Right, so this is what none of the reverb is just the EQ. As I'm cranking it up, I'm adding more reverb. That's all the reverb. That's a completely wet mix, wet and dry mix, little terms they use there. You can play around with that. You can play around if that reverb has EQ built into it, where it's removing some low end itself, where it's dampening the sounds. Like different reverbs have different things you can add. This one you can play around with the different textures, the different plates. You may not want to do this though. You may want to go for a free version of something. That's fine. So I'm going to disable these. Close this out. Again, here's the original beat. So we already added our, you know, so our people talking in the background or our walking cars driving by, you know, whatever little sirens maybe in the distance if you're in the city, right? So let's go with like the stock plugins. So another big thing is don't rely on your eyes. <laughs> We're in the world of audio. So use your ears. What sounds good? I really hate these quick TikTok videos or even like YouTube engineer dudes are like yeah use this set you know specific setting to make all your vocals sound amazing like that that's not how that works man <laughs> and if they tell you different they're lying so what we're gonna do is use our ears so i'm just gonna do the same thing what i'm using is a low pass filter a low pass filter let me take these other ones off so it's not distracting a low pass filter lets low frequencies pass through so it's getting rid of all the high end stuff. So like this little shelf. So everything after this, all this area over here is being cut off. So as I, oop, I should enable this too. That would help, right? <laughs> so I'm turning it on. So as I move this over, the little crackly noise you're hearing is when it's parametric EQ and they tend to do that. But it's also just my computer being crazy. Essentially what I did was the same thing that this was doing, is I removed the top end of the frequencies. So use the tools you have. Again, you don't need to use paid programs. You can use free ones like Audacity and Reaper and still do the same thing. You just, we're learning the tools. We're using our ears. To me, that sounds pretty good. So next thing we want to do is add a reverb. And there's a lot of reverbs you can use. Uh, before I do that, though, I wanted to also show you, you know, there's other EQs and they don't all have like little windows where you see little fun, colorful lines bobbing around here. Some just have knobs and dials. So you can basically play around the same settings. I'm cutting out the high end, leaving the low end. You can even boost it up. Um, or, you know, the ones that look like this with well, there's sliders and stuff. And essentially it's the same thing with this setup. I just removed the top end, kept the low end and... You may need to use a few of these. That's called uh, parallel processing. If I had like multiple ones of the same kind of EQ kind of cutting out frequencies, 
um, processing it multiple times to achieve the same sound. Anyway, this video is basically made, meant for people getting into audio and like intermediate levels. So that's, I may repeat things you already know. Bear with me. So I'm using the default uh, built-in reverb that came with this. So I'm gonna play around and see which one sounds good. I want a larger sounding room. So this mix slider here is the same as this dry wet mix here. So remember dry signals when we're talking reverb, I mean basically there's no reverb being applied to it. It's completely dry, it's the original signal. Wet mixes are when the reverb is being applied to it. So as I'm adding this, it's a 100% wet mix. So that's all reverb processing. All right, so this is completely wet mix. This is completely dry mix. So I'm just gonna kind of blend this in a little bit. Play around the room size. This is a larger room, smaller room. Again, different reverbs will have different things, different options for you. I uh, know Valhalla Supermassive is a wonderful free reverb if you want to use one that's not built into your DAW. So check that one out too. Uh, vintage verb here. So this is completely free, but sounds phenomenal. So decay is how long the effect takes to, uh, I like how it tells you to do what it does. Um, how long the effect takes to get to, to finish. So you have different presets, you have small rooms, you have large rooms, you already have ambience built into this. So let's hear how this would sound in a large hall, right? Or maybe like a chamber. Half the work is already done for us right there. And the next thing I would do, honestly, is just like EQ it somehow. To me, this sounds like a character standing in like a hallway or something backstage. But you get the idea. Play around with these. Play around with the order of them. You know, playing around with what goes first will affect the overall sound of what you're creating and stuff. But anyway, uh, I will talk to y'all soon. Be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you want to see me cover next. Peace.